Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Avinash Dadich. I am Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. So, by training, I am a lawyer. I did my law from Delhi University. Thereafter, I worked in Delhi High Court and Supreme Court as a lawyer. After that, I moved to France for my LLM in International and European Union Law. Thereafter, I moved to UK for my PhD. I came back to India, initially worked with Government of India as a lawyer, as a legal advisor with Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Then I moved to corporate and I worked with E&Y and Deloitte, the big four consulting firm. And the last six, seven years, I am in academics full time as a professor. So, I am going to present a very interesting a topic which is becoming very relevant in business world now that is about the legal and regulatory matrix in India for business houses. So, the first question which may ask that as a business manager, as a business student, why you should know about law regulatory framework because normally you believe that that job should be done by a legal manager or by a compliance officer and your job is just to take care of business aspects. That was the situation maybe 20, 30 years back, but now when you go and do business like for example, if you are a marketing manager or a sales manager or maybe finance or general management, you have to take lot of calls and those business decisions may attract civil and criminal legal and regulatory liability for your company. That is why when you go and talk to your legal manager and compliance officer, you need to understand their language. The objective of the, uh, this lecture and upcoming 20 lectures is not to make you expert in law, but just to give you some idea that how law regulation are affecting your businesses. Okay? So, that is our objective and today in our first lecture, we will talk about introduction of ethics in business in India. I believe that uh, during your uh, BBA and MBA, you must have studied the ethics, ethical standards, professional standards in business houses. So, before jumping to law and regulatory aspect, the first lecture will be focusing on the ethical aspects of business. So, let us start learning outcomes. After this lecture, I believe you will be able to explain why ethics are important for both corporations and individuals in the world of business. Because when you take a decision, ethical or unethical, it creates some impact for business house, for your company as well as individually for you. You will also understand the business case of the importance of ethics in business, both in the terms of driving long, long term value creation and protecting value that how ethics can create business value. And then you will be able to describe the key components required to design, implement, and support a successful ethics program in any business. And finally, we will also suggest few ethical management approaches for business for various characteristics in times of size, legal status and so on. And we will also talk about the Indian evolution that how ethical issues have been dealt in ancient India, medieval India and during the British period and present. Okay. So, I will try to cover 
many aspects in my lecture. So, first question, what is ethics in business? Sometime we say that ethics, morals, they are not important in business. The ultimate objective of business is to make money. No doubt, the ultimate objective of any business is to make profit, to make profit for your stakeholders, for your shareholders, for your employees. But at the same time, we cannot ignore the impact of your business on the society, okay, on the economy. So, it is a very interesting proverb, there are no new sins, the old ones just get more publicity. So, historically if you see since thousands years in business houses, they always had a dilemma, the moral dilemma, ethical dilemma, what to do, what not to do, what is right, what is wrong. So, more or less you will see that uh, unethical behavior is very much consistent in all civilizations, in all types of businesses. So, there is nothing new like you will see the different types of unethical or immoral behavior in business, maybe in different shape or different way, but more or less you will find that all these illegal, unethical, immoral activities uh, were always present in business. Okay. Then the John Kenneth, he said very rightly in 1929 when the great uh, depression happened in USA. As a protection against financial illusion or insanity, memory is far better than law. Memory is far better than law. What is memory? Memory is basically our ethical, moral structure of our society. What is right? What is wrong? You do not need to explain someone because it is more or less you will find given a society, given a time, society can always define and decide what is right and wrong and it keeps changing from one place to another place. Okay. So, memories are very important. The, when I say memory means individual memory, society, society memory, country memory. So, all these memories are very important. So, moral principles basically to protect guidance, to provide guidance for our behavior when it affects other. If you are doing something and it is not affecting someone's life or someone's business, then nobody cares about it. Okay, this is then your very much individual life and the, uh, the system or the state or the government uh, would not like to intervene. But once your actions start affecting other people's life, then these moral and ethical principles really helps you. When I say ethics, maybe in few words we can say honesty, fairness, diligence and care and respect for others. So, these are the basic foundations, you know and obviously when I say these are basic means that, you know, there is no option if we want a good society, there has to be some fairness, honesty, diligence and care for other people. Okay. But then there is an issue, the issue is balancing self-interest and public good. So, in a society, you want to make money, okay, that is your personal interest, but at the same time there is a public good. Like for example, when I say environment, you want to make more money and you really do not care about pollution. If your company, if your businesses are creating more pollution, if they are making air pollution, water pollution, by doing that, if you are making money, you are happy. But at the same time, it is affecting public good. So, the law, ethics, regulatory environment, everything is just creating this balance between self-interest and public good. And I do not say that one is greater than another. Sometimes self-interest is very much important. Like for example, in intellectual property rights, we have to give protection to inventors for their patent, copyright, trademark and we restrict we say that 
the public at large cannot use these intellectual property rights without their consent. So, you will see that in law, ethics and regulatory framework they always try to make a balance so that self interest as well as the public good are served equally. If this balance is not made out then what happens then consequences are personal loss and public loss like Ponzi schemes, inside trading, corporate fraud all types of things start happening. Okay? So, whenever this balance is disturbed then not only individual people lose their money and their jobs, their security, their family, but even at the larger level like for example, when I say insider trading, you know the insider trading in uh, share market it happens. If we allow insider trading, then people will lose faith in the stock exchange, then people will not like to invest more money in the market and people are not investing money in the market, then the the capital flow will be affected and companies will not have enough capital to expand their businesses. So, even a small action of an individual can affect the entire ecosystem. Then the debate is about law versus ethics. Some people say is that why we should worry about ethics, we should we just need to follow laws, we just need the rules, regulations, laws and we will follow them because we really do not know uh, what is ethics, you know, because ethics keep changing from one place to another place. But then my argument is that when market is highly regulated by laws, if we make laws for each and every activity in business, then it will be very, very difficult to do business. Because we need to give some autonomy, some freedom you know to business houses and managers to take appropriate decisions and calls. If we introduce laws for each and every aspect of business, then I really do not think that business can flourish. Okay? And the culture of integrity is far above and beyond strict compliance of law. If we do not have culture of integrity, culture of morality, culture of ethics, then I really do not think that any rules, regulations or any legal structure can help us. These rules and regulations, laws can only work when in a given uh, in a society uh, there is a culture of integrity and ethics. In absence of integrity and ethics, it is almost impossible to convince people that why they should behave in legal manner. So, the debate can be that culture and law, when I say culture means culture of a society, culture of a country and then this debate is global like global versus local, can we have a, a global culture, can we have a global ethics in business houses. I think this is very interesting debate which is taking place in business houses right now that can we have uniform uh, policies for ethical behavior. Like for example, if I, I, I give you two examples, one is global, the another one is local. Corruption, when I say corruption in government or in society, when you go to Africa or Asia like in India or some other Asian countries, then I think the corruption is more or less well accepted in our society, you know. Uh, maybe it's yeah, it is illegal, but if you talk to any layman or any business house or politician, bureaucrat, I'm more or less, you know, I'm not advocating corruption, but I'm just trying to say that in Asian and African countries, corruption is more or less accepted. Okay, but if you go to Western world like Europe and US, then it's very difficult for them to accept corruption at the society level, at the company level individual level people really do not accept corruption. So, this is a cultural change you know that same ethic uh, the value can change from one society to another society and when we introduce rules and regulations the same rules and regulations in two different cultural societies we see two different outcome. Okay? Same thing in India when I say alcohol selling 
in gujarat it's prohibited in bihar it's prohibited but in punjab or tamil nadu or karnataka it's very much available so how to do your business when you see in within a country you see two different states where one they don't allow at all and another they really promote it okay so even the ethical value can change within the country i'm not talking about outside of country but within the country cultural values can change okay so i'm just you know throwing these examples to you so that you can appreciate the impact of culture on rules regulations and ethical values then the second question ethics versus morality that are the same ethic and moral values are the same so let's see what they are business ethics is also known as corporate ethics okay it is form of applied ethics or professional ethics that examine ethical principles and moral or ethical problems that arise in the business environment other side morality is a concerned with the norms values and belief embedded in a social process which define right and wrong for an individual or a community so ethics is basically is given by in the corporate sector but morality is more or less is a part of culture okay so like i i believe you will understand through the example better the environment protection versus csr fund so csr fund now it's uh, as the law but before the law in some companies because of their business ethics they introduced csr funds it was not mandated by law it was not concerned with their moral principles but the company as a corporate they took it as a ethical value and they started csr fund but if i say moral principles and environmental protection maybe for a company environmental protection can be issue of law but and if they have a trade off type of situation like for example if they can make uh, 100 crore rupees by polluting a river and if they integrate that if anything happens any regulatory or any legal action happens against us we will lose maybe 10 crore 20 crore so then i think this question will be an ethical dilemma for them okay but when i go to environmental protection for an individual like country like in india people don't like to pollute uh, rivers people don't like to cut some types of trees like the people you know so ethics and moral principles they are very different and the morality principles are more concerned with individuals rather than the corporates how to foster culture of ethics okay so part and parcel of organization ethics is fostering a culture of ethics through so these are the things through which we can promote ethical and moral principles motivating employees individually to act ethically see when i say a company company means individuals okay so if we promote we motivate individuals to act ethically then there will be a collective consciousness in the organization or in a corporate and then people will like to hesitate to do anything which is not ethical promoting integrity and code of ethics through modeling men- mentoring and other activities so it's not only that you promote you need to create some codes of ethics you need to do modeling you need to do mentoring you need to do proper compliance so you have to act it's not like just you know lip sympathy that okay please behave in ethical manner people don't do it there's a 80 20 rule i believe you know that rule that the rule says that 80% people in any given society or in a company they act as per the rules regulations and the intention or action of the bosses or the employer okay so if the boss or the company wants them to be ethical they become ethical 
if the company says we don't worry about ethical values then they become unethical so 80 percent people always move with the uh, direction of the company uh, intentions 20 percent people they really don't care either they are very good or or very bad they really they really don't change if they are good they are, they remain good if they are bad they remain bad okay so 80 percent people in a given in a company can be mobilized okay uh, through these uh, uh, modeling mentoring and activities and ensuring the performance management and reward system don't contradict or undermine core values of a business this is very important if you say that you win business by doing any unethical business we really don't care and we give you reward so in that scenario people will not have any incentive to go for ethical behavior so your reward policy your promotion policy and your all uh, incentives must integrate this ethical concept the ethical character okay otherwise it again i say it will be a lip sympathy people will not follow it so your action must support the ethical behavior of your employees then you have to demonstrate you know when suppose you are a manager maybe after your mba or bba you become a man manager and there will be some people under you uh, under your team so you have to demonstrate your employees that business is willing to walk the talk so you have to act you have to act ethical you know if you are not behaving in ethical manner then i really don't think that other guys your juniors will do the same and you also you should also expect ethical behavior from your seniors okay so now the important ethical questions so when considering a questionable course of action one has to ask these three important questions so suppose you are facing a situation and you believe that this is a situation which is uh, asking myself whether it's ethical or not okay so most of the time in business situations when you are doing marketing sales finance hr or any type of activity then you will come across to these type of situations where you have to ask these three questions the first question is it against the law does it violate company or professional policies so the first question you should ask is it against the law if it is against the law i should not do it if it is against the company's policies and professional standards i should not do it what if everyone did this how would i feel if someone did this to me so it's more like an empathy type of situation you have to put yourself in someone's shoes and say okay if i do this the other guy will suffer so should i do it like for example you are a marketing guy and you start giving false promises or you know the promises which you you know that is not going to happen so you might be able to sell your product i know it's more like in a professor's type of discussion because at the end of the day you have to get your business but then as i said it's a long term aspect you have to see because if you if you follow unethical behavior with your client you may win that business once but you lose that client okay you lose all possible references coming from that client okay so once you start thinking that how other guy will feel if i do something illegal unethical immoral activity then i don't think that you will do it because then you will then you will start feeling the pain of that person and if you are smart enough you will start realizing that i i'm going to lose my business okay and the third question you should ask am i sacrificing long term benefits for short term gains okay so this is the third question and you should ask again and again yourself you have to sit down make the long term analysis short term analysis for a short term gain are you uh, ready to sacrifice your long term gains this is very important and uh, you will see that many top class leaders like you know they have lost their job i don't want to name anyone but 
if you see if you google it you will find many top class leaders very senior people they lost their job they lost their uh, reputation they lost their career just because of they uh, choose short term gains over the long term gains so students it might look again very theoretical but if you take one step back and start thinking that should i do it or should i not do it and if you choose to go for long term benefits maybe in short term you will lose some money you will lose maybe minor promotion but in long term you will build some more confidence you will build more reputation in the market in your sector and believe me people will give you more respect within the company and outside of the company so you need to be very careful when you are asking these three questions so when you apply ethics in business you can follow these ethical principles so first is as uh, uh, solidarity efficiency rationality fairness refraining from willingness harming others and so, uh, role responsibility see when i say ethics it's more about leadership it's taking a call you know sometimes you believe you think oh i am a very junior guy other guys are doing it why should i just you know go for this ethical things and no because once you adopt unethical behavior in your thought process and you ignore all these things like solidarity efficiency rationality fairness empathy role responsibility then even you are a assistant manager or you are a ceo in a company you are going to face same type of situation again and again so it's not about the junior mid term a mid level or a senior management all the people should integrate ethical values in their decision making process even you are the junior most person in your organization okay because ultimately you are working for your own you are creating your own brand value and you are creating your own reputation in the market okay so you should apply these principles when you are going for uh, ethics and suppose you believe that other guys are doing it i'm losing my money i'm losing my clients and other people by applying unethical behavior they are getting more business so what to do so in most of the companies in mnc's now even the indian firms are also adopting this policy disclosure disclosure on managing business ethics so reporting system ma uh, monitoring audit incidents management learning loop okay so if you believe that there is something wrong you should be a whistle blower and you should re, uh, you should uh, issue the red flag to your organization to your compliance officer to your legal team to your immediate boss that something is happening wrong okay then governance and tone from the top you if you are working at the senior level in a, a, maybe you are you, you are going to start a startup you know so then uh, very quickly you become the ceo or cfo or you know the head of the company so you need to understand that the governance it's torn from the top if you behave in ethical be, uh, manner then your junior guys will also behave in ethical manner if you uh, decide to work on any uh, unethical side don't expect that your juniors will uh, behave in ethical manner okay then you need to create lot of policies you know it's not only action you need to create lot of policies rules regulations codes and then you need to give them lot of training also so your, your junior guys they want to behave in ethical manner but maybe they don't have proper policies rules regulation training so sometime and unknowingly unintentionally they do something unethical then risk assessment and third party risk you uh, even after getting all the training and all these things sometime it happens that some as i said 20% people uh they like to do something wrong okay unethical so in that scenario you need to do lot of risk assessment by the third parties okay and the third party risk suppose uh, maybe your company 
your guys are not doing anything wrong but maybe the third parties your consultants your vendors uh, they are doing something unethical illegal so you need because they are connected with you and they are part of your business so you need to be very careful when uh, you are engaging with third parties so you should go for proper risk assessment and then finally training and communication this is the important thing please communicate very clearly uh, with your team with your juniors with your seniors and communication is become more stronger when it's supported by training if you just communicate without training then it doesn't happen so you need to give them lot of training support and finally they should communicate so now let's come back to the indian concept of uh, uh, this ethical one disclosure i will be talking only about vedanta principles but it's not, it's not like that i just want to focus on the hindu philosophy because uh, i strongly believe that in all religions like the holy quran or holy bible and all religious text by other religions they also have the same type of philosophy they promote ethics in business okay so here i am going to talk only about uh, uh, vedantic principles or our ancient knowledge but i am very much clear and uh, uh, very confident that other religions also have the same type of principles okay so please you know don't take it as a religious angle but uh, you also need to understand that the uh, when i say vedantic principle it's not religion it's not hinduism uh vedantic principles are more like ancient than any religion any hinduism i think i can say almost like 5000 year back and all forms of religion started maybe 2500 years back okay so you can clearly see that those uh, 2500 year time there was no religion in india okay india was a absolutely uh, non religious country but more like a vedantic principles okay it was more like a principle based society than a religion based society and when the religion uh, other religions like the christianity islam and so many other religions they took a shape then maybe hinduism also took a shape maybe in uh, late uh, after 4th century 5th century ad so uh, please take it as a principle rather than a religion okay because vedanta is not a religion okay i'm not talking about hinduism so in vedantic principles there is a strong interrelationship between religion religious thoughts and economic activity in india in vedantic principle they connect dharma with life and when i say dharma is not the synonyms of religion in vedantic principle dharma means doing right thing okay following the right path that is the dharma it has nothing to do with the modern context of religion okay so they always connect the dharma with your business the rich culture of india uh, very spiritual very religious is focused on intuitive ethical decision making and rule of man not rule of law rule of man which sets in apart from the western analytical approach to ethical decision making based on norms and rule of law so this is very interesting uh, difference here that ancient vedantic principle they emphasize on individual they say ki as a individual you need to make a call you need to take a decision and until and unless you are not spiritually empowered and you don't understand what is dharma what is dharma what is right what is wrong a uh, law will not help you okay law will always react if you do something wrong law will come and put some penalty on you maybe financial penalty or they put you behind the bars but while at the time of taking a decision law will not help you okay so it's more like uh, based on the uh, doctrine of karma okay I, i believe that in india everybody knows it so in doctrine of karma what they say that actions can be broadly classified as appropriate or inappropriate good or bad okay 
So, you know exactly what is right, what is wrong, what is ethical, what is unethical, what is moral, what is immoral. You do not need to uh, take approval from someone okay? and it is your call. Okay? If you believe that there is something right, this is right for you. Okay? The notion of rebirth where actions in particular in lifetime may bear fruit either during the current life or during future one. So, you always believe that this life is not the end. Okay, this is the you know continuity with so many past lives and future lives. So, if you do something good in this life, you are creating good karmas. And those karmas will help you to reduce all the sins which you have uh, done in the past lives and it will save you from suffering in the current life. Okay. So, if you do good, then minor, it will minus your past sins. At the same time, it will also add more uh, positive things in your future lives. Okay. So, the Indian Vedantic principle is very much, I think it is like a bank account that uh, maybe uh, you have some deficient budget. So, if you make more money, first you uh, cover your deficit and then you make more money and you put in your account so that you can use in future. So, it is very scientific, very mathematical, scientific and easy to understand. Good actions in the present and lead to good outcomes in the future and inappropriate correct action lead to bad outcomes in the future. So, it is directly connected with your future. You know, we are all trying to cre uh, create a good future for us. Okay? And sometimes even it connects with your uh, kids with your family that if you do something wrong, uh, wrong will come to your daughters or your son or your family. Or, uh, so, you know uh, your behavior is very much restricted then, you know because now you are not thinking only about rules, regulations, but you are thinking about yourself and about your family and it is more like a psychological, emotional regulation rather than the legal regulation. So, in Vedantic philosophy, business and ethics, karma as a part of Vedantic ethical philosophy states that the an individual who choose the appropriate like the ethical path att attains happiness in a long term and one who choose pleasure or easy option like the bad path or unethical path lose sight of the long term objective happiness. Okay? So, this is very clear short term and long term analysis you make. Okay, and it is not about the rules, regulations, it is about your life, about your family life. And um, uh, they, have de they have decided uh, that uh, you know like the, there are four objectives of life. So, when you do a business, then uh, you cannot say okay, the profit is the only objective. Okay? And now that approach is also changing even in business world. Earlier it was shareholding approach shareholding approach means that you are making money for your shareholders you know they have put money in your company so our 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 job our responsibility is to give them more and more profit so that they can make money okay so that's why you are doing all these unethical behavior because you are a manager and some people have put their investment so your job is to give them more money you know to uh, take care of the interest of shareholders but now the approach is stakeholders stakeholders it is not only the shareholders they are important the all stakeholders like the employees, vendors, society, environment, you know human rights all uh, these things are also important for you as a manager as a leader. Okay? So, in Indian philosophy in Indian Vedantic philosophy they have defined four goals in life. So, first is dharma that is a justice, duty and virtue then artha that is I think that is a shareholding approach artha success and prosperity then kama that you enjoy your money and moksha. Okay. Moksha we can say in terms of like you are, you are releasing it you know. So, maybe the CSR uh, the corporate social responsibility can be the one part of moksha that you know you are releasing your money for the society without any interest. So, you make money by using dharma you follow the rules, regulations, ethical values and you create artha. Okay? So, you make money, you, you make profit and then kama you enjoy your money, you enjoy your profit 
and finally once you enjoy you finish your enjoying and uh, you know uh, taking advantage of your uh, wealth and your money then you release it for the society so it's a very scientific approach it it's not restricting your desire to make money okay and the vedantic philosophy never says that uh, you you don't need to make money you you need to make money okay it, they say it very clearly that uh, even swami vivekanand uh, said very clearly that poverty is a sin you know you have to make money as i said ki artha you have to make money uh, but based on the justice or the dharma then you enjoy this also you know you enjoy your money there is nothing wrong that you enjoy your money if you buy a good car good house good mobile you go for good travel in vedantic philosophy they allow it even they promote it but finally they say then go for moksha moksha means now you redistribute your uh, wealth and your uh, money for other people okay so now we will talk about the evolution of indian business uh, ethics the evolution of business ethics in india can be divided into following five phases okay the first like okay i'm not see i'm not going to go back in like an ancient period because see the ancient period is not relevant anymore what happened 2000 3000 4000 years back maybe not relevant right now so i will start with very recently from 17th century ad so like you can say 321 years back and in these 200 uh, 320 years so many things changed in india so you can say that by this time indian gdp was consisting almost 26% of global gdp we were one of the richest country in the world okay right now we have only maybe maybe maximum 2% of global gdp so you can say from 26% to 2% you know and 2% when i say it's like we are growing very much in last 20 uh, 30 years so from 26% to 2% i think that's a big story so i want to start only from that point when we had 26% gdp and india was like you know the most uh, one of the richest country the china got 25% world uh, gdp share india got 26 so china and india used to have almost 51% of gdp and all the european and uh, you know middle east african and all the entire globe uh, got only 49 okay so what was the ethical value or ethical system in uh, and during that period when we got so much money that was the panchayati raj so panchayati raj the primary legal and ethical cultural ruling in india was the panchayat a group of elders who were chosen and accepted by the local community to rule and regulate the business community that was very interesting so it was not like the rules regulations coming from the king or the state they decided to trust their elders the wise people in the community so they choose them they say okay now these five people uh, will be deciding our business disputes okay and those guys were using their impartial decisions and making a balance that business should not suffer at the same time society should not suffer and instead of a uh, lengthy legal and regulatory litigation can we solve these concepts in a very nice manner and people had lot of faith you know in this system it was not like that okay like okay i don't like you now i'm going to king no almost 99.99% people had full trust and faith in the system okay so it worked very well less litigation less conflicts and because of this harmonious way in the society the india grew very fast and it's very interesting 
suppose if I do something unethical, illegal behavior and if I need to face a judge, the judge does not know me, I do not know judge. When I go to a uh, court room, nobody knows me. Okay? So, I do not have any emotional and psychological burden on me, even if I have done something wrong. I can always argue that okay, I have done nothing wrong, because I really do not care about my surroundings. But what if I am in front of my elders in my community and everybody knows that I have done something wrong, it is very difficult for me to plead not guilty, because ultimately I want to live in that society, that community. Even if I win the case, even if I get the favorable judgment from the panchayat by saying lies and unethical things, I will lose respect in the community. Okay. So, it was more like a community focused justice system, community focused ethical and moral uh, checklist. Okay. What happened then? After the phase 1, the British Raj came. So, you can say 1858 because 1857 we had the you know revolution, the first revolution, uh, freedom fight. So, this British period control over India opened a window of opportunity for furthering Indian national trade and international trade and integration into the global economy. Okay. The traditional business system and ethical practices that incorporate a social enforcement mechanism were replaced with a new system and the new system was court and police stations, okay. advocates, rules, regulations, laws. So, now the uh, these organizations, these uh, bodies were deciding disputes and in that dispute mechanism, uh, ethics and morals were absent. Please try to understand, when you go before a panchayat or the elder people, they will talk about everything, they will talk about ethics, they will talk about moral principles, they will talk about rules, regulations, because ultimately they want to do justice. But in the British period, the ethical and moral principles were replaced by rules and regulations of law. And you cannot say that the laws are always promoting ethics and moral principles. Okay. Laws are very much neutral. Okay. So, in this period, so many things changed okay. and the impact of this period you can see easily which happened in India like you can see clearly after 1947 till 1990. That period or that phase is called license Raj or permit Raj or inspector Raj. The license Raj trained a large army of educated professionals through its wide array of public sector firms, government, R&D labs, technical colleges, producing many good administrators, okay. but failing to harness individual knowledge and entrepreneurship to truly develop India. So, what happened after freedom, after 1947, we developed an ecosystem where so many things were happening, but controlled by the government. So, the individual growth were very much controlled. And second, that is very interesting. During this period, when I say license Raj or permit Raj, maybe some of you maybe have not heard about it, but you go and talk to your parents or maybe your grandfather and ask them that what was the situation in India before 1990, if you uh, wanted to buy a, like a car or a, a scooter or maybe a, a, a telephone. Okay. You had to wait for 3 to 5 years okay. and if you are doing a business, to expand your business, you need to go and take a license. If you want to export more, you need to go and take a license. If you want to do anything in your business, you need to go and take license and approval from the government. So, that was the reflection of the British period in India that everything should be decided by state and by rules and regulations and the community and individuals should not have any role in the decision making process. So, this very much legalistic approach 
you know the, the British approach that we cannot trust Indians. So we need to make rules, regulations and whenever they want to do something like if suppose if I want to buy some more machinery for my factory, no you can't do it. First you need to come explain me, take my approval, pay the fee, then only you can do it. So the same approach continued even after 1947 and because of that only few companies, only few family houses like the Tata, Birlas, Dalmias and maybe 8 or 10 more houses, they control almost 90 percent of our Indian economy. Okay. So, that was the time even the corruption also got accepted in society. The Indian business infrastructure reliance on the government you can easily see. The last four, fourth one is invisible Raj. So, invisible Raj it happened, the influence of ethics based on Hinduism and Vedantic philosophies were further weakened under pressure of powerful global markets. So, when we opened our economy after 1990 and we say we want to stop the license Raj, then we promoted the global companies and once we opened our door, then we saw a huge change in Indian mindset. After the introduction of the global business policies into Indian traditional business and legal systems, more unethical practices entered the system as part of the free trade and modernization or the globalization. So, earlier it was like the closed corruption, but then after 1990 it became very big corruption, open corruption. So, you see after 1990 lot of schemes happened in uh, like, like the Harshad Mehta scheme happened in financial markets. So many corruption activities happen in India after 1990 and still they are going on. Okay. So, if you see the historical corruption history in India before 1990, corruption was there, but it very limited manner. But after 1990, when we started this globalization, then invisible Raj started. The, all these big companies from the back, they started controlling the Indian economy. Okay. This transformation had a major impact on how business is conducted in India and what is considered as ethically accepted in business. So, when we saw these big companies coming to India, then so many things changed. And finally, the Zugard Raj, which is still going on in 2010 to present it. As a result of the desire of Artha, the opening of an international market and delicious Chinese global economy success, we started doing Zugards. And the practice of uh, jury rigging, bribery and doing all needed repairs oneself. Jugaad has evolved as a slang for a quick fix. It has also developed into the concept of borderline criminal activity in the informal Indian economy. So, from uh, 2010 you can see corruption is there, but it is more like a Jugaad type of economy. We are all trying to fix things, you know, instead of creating something absolutely new. Uh, we are all like fixing things. Okay. So, this, this type of environment creates a good ecosystem for unethical behavior. Conclusions, as India integrated into the global economy uh, result of foreign influence, it is important for Indian firms to understand that they can no longer afford to ignore the issue of business ethics. So, they need to understand that unethical behavior will not take them to a longer path. Globalization has also highlighted the strategic importance of ethical behavior in conducting business worldwide. If you want to go global, we have to be ethical. Western managers rely on normative ethics where Indian managers rely more on assessing rational attributes to specific areas. Okay, so, loyal to their, loyalty to their organization is more important than ethical principle. You need to understand, you are working for a company, you are not a slave. If you believe that your company is doing something wrong, please uh, resist, please raise your voice. Okay? Managers from uh, collectivistic societies are more likely to follow the, this type of unethical approach. And then finally, ethics and uh, uh, these things we can integrate in our system. Act with integrity, competence, diligence, respect and in ethical manner with the public, clients, prospective clients, employers, employees, colleagues in the investment profession and in your business.
okay so this is very important that you need to because you are investing your money okay you are investing your time so please behave very professionally very ethically with all stakeholders place the integrity of the profession and the interest of the stakeholders above your own personal interest it's a stakeholders they are more important than your personal interest or even your employer's interest use reasonable care and exercise independent professional judgment when conducting business analysis recommendations actions and engaging in any other professional activity in business so when you face any situation please sit down think and take your independent call okay because ultimately you will be known by your decisions you will face good or bad outcome uh, because of your activities so while i finishing this uh, presentation i just want to say few things my dear students currently we are facing jugaad type of economy where people will say that everything is acceptable but that's not true jugaad can take you to one level but if you want to go to the next level next level next level only ethics and professional standards will help you it might look very theoretical but if you see the uh, development of all these new startups and the collapse of all business houses you will see very clearly that people who are investing more time and energy on innovation new ideas they are following ethical environment and the big corporations the old guys the old generation which relied on this jugaad type of economy or a, a, this you know inspector raj type of economy they are collapsing and finally when we will move to the legal and regu regulatory aspect please don't forget that your unethical behavior will lead you to illegal behavior it's very difficult to determine and decide when your unethical behavior will convert into illegal behavior and once it's converted into illegal behavior then you are inviting civil and criminal liability on you okay and that will be the end of your career that will be the end of your business so please remember ethics is not a luxury ethics is not a choice it must be the part of your business it must be the part of your professional life irrespective of your short term uh, loss but if you are looking for long term career long term growth ethics is the foundation Thank you very much I will see you next lecture